And praise the steam on to the most high y'all by where y'all shot how to see out John 539. Somebody need to mute their phone. Search the scriptures for any of you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me, and you would not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the, not the love of Allah in you. DC, you must be watching on the thing. You could probably somebody do something, because that's not that's not that's not gonna work. I come in my Abba's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. I don't know who that is. Let me see what that is. All right. No, that's true. Somebody around here doing that jump. That jump echoing, man. Somebody got to check their phone. I come in my Abba's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allah him only? Do not think that I will accuse you. The Abba there is one that accused you, even Moses in whom you trust. But had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Kira, you watching that thing on there? Because you can't watch it and be on the phone. But then that, well, that's what then that's real well phone. We well, gotta mute the phone. That's an echo, man. Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25 and uh and, and 28 hold on man let me try this over. you gotta come unlock your phone real quick man yeah because i can't i can't deal with that no i got it yeah i can't i can't deal with that all that echoing and all that man i can't deal with that Check that and see what's going on with that. I can't deal with that. Yeah. All right. There it was. It don't stop now because I can't. I can't deal with it. Leviticus 28 and 29. It says, if a man selling sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it. Within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year, he, may he redeem it. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established for forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may, rede they may be redeemed and they shall go out in the jubilee. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession, may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold in the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the city of the Levites are their possession among the children of Yasharal. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. The thing that we're going to sit back and look at is the word for walled, for walled city. The word for wall is, uh, and I had it in is coma. How do y'all believe that we would spell that at the present time? I already have it spelled, but I'm just asking to see who would be able to spell it. No. No. Yeah. The word is coma. It's C-H-O-W-M-A-H. It means wall. It simply just means wall. 
Yeah, but you want to do it in order. And that make it easier for you. Yeah, but y'all skip the word, uh, the character that comes after the, the cot. C-H-O-W-M-A-H. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at cot, what would we use? If you're looking at a wall, you're not going to uh, necessarily use separation or divide. So what would you necessarily use? Huh? You fin What's all the meanings of it? I'm thinking of another word. That's what I was thinking about. Another character. So excuse me for that. I know. I know. One of them is. Yeah, we have to use that. So if ooh, what are you gonna use? Secure. All right. And for mean, we would clearly use power. You're not going to use water. You're going to use something that's mighty. And then, of course, for hey, you may not necessarily use revelation. What are some of the other meanings for the character of hey? I think it's one more. Now we overlook quite a bit. I just want y'all to be aware of it instead of for some of them just to go to, oh, it's just going to be revealed. That's just like with some of the certain stuff, that's why we, a couple of them you grab and hold. Like when we were dealing with the, uh, the make and the beautiful in his time, told you to look into the greatness. It's like no one told you that this word, the revelation of this word will grab hold to you. It's just to be able to shake the tendency to sit back and try to use the same meaning for every character when you see it. Even if you know that that's going to what it would be, you still have to have your mind to examine and just not get comfortable and say, oh, hey, going to be revealed every time. Cot going to be uh, or Sean going to be consumed every time. Do you know what I'm saying? So in that one there, we would use protect or you would use surround. You wouldn't want to use divide. You wouldn't want to use separate. Because what does a wall do? It surrounds and or it protects. So then if you look at it, it's the protection of those who are joined together to the power of what? And for hey, what would you have just besides reveal and, and, to, and to see? To look, to read. Boom. That's what I remember. But look at the key words you just mentioned. To what? To, look. to breathe. And if you're looking at breathing, then what would you look at? The Ruach. So then what you're looking at is, is the protection for those who are joined together to the power of life. Because what that breath gives. Let's look and see. John, Job 33. Because remember, he's taking this, 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 he's purchasing a walled city that someone has sold. If you have a walled city, what do you have walls around that city for? It is to protect it. If the Ruach HaKadosh of Elohim is present, then what is his spirit going to do? He's going to protect you. This is what I mean on not falling into complacency of seeing a character and just automatically saying it means this or means that. Because the majority of time, that's what it's going to be. Do you know what I'm saying? Or why sometimes it pays to look at them and look at the context of what you're looking at. Because a wall does separate, but in this instance, you want a wall that's going to surround or to protect. Why do you build walls around kingdoms? You're trying to protect something. Or walls around castles, to be specific. You know what I'm saying? Well, at least in modern times, anyway. Job 33. Y'all should know the verse, but we're just going to look at it anyway. 33 in, uh, in fall. Hello, Leah. The Ruach of Elohim have made me, and the breath of the Almighty have given me life. So when you look at, hey, we can sit back in some instances when it's used, you're going to look at it as that's breath. Because what I, I told you this before, once that man takes his breath back, you're dead. But if the breath of the Almighty by his Ruach HaKadosh, which is given by Yahusha, is in you, then you are never dead. And therefore, you continually have life in you. You know what I'm saying? That's why I asked you, that. if your breath leaves your body right now, do you still have breath in you is the question you should ask yourself. Because all this extra stuff nigga be worrying about, that junk ain't hitting on nothing. You know what I'm saying? Not if you ain't secured that. 
You can secure all the money in the world. You can secure all the material items in the world. You can secure the family you want and still go to hell. Because you didn't secure the most important thing, which was this man's breath. Because you took that for granted. Because you looked at it as a means of, I know this and I know that. But you haven't secured. Like This book is a book of learning and application. You know what I'm saying? Once you've learned it, you ought to apply it. And you have to look at it. If you're not applying it, why are you not applying it? That's why we looked at that word last night in Ecclesiastes. He said he have made. So the things that he made, when that revealing of that word comes, it grabs hold to them. Immediately. In the book of Psalms, he made the statement that when they hear of me, they will submit unto me. See, a lot of people hear the word, don't grab hold to them. It only grab hold to you for a moment because you feel bad and then you fall back doing what you were doing or you fall back worrying about what you were worrying about. And just slides and fades away because it's supposed to grab hold to you. You ever had somebody grab hold of you and shake you and tell you you were stupid? People do it all the time. Somebody like, get a hold of yourself. You sound like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? And they grab hold of you like you are an idiot right now. You're being stupid. You know what I'm saying? If you're close enough to somebody, some people might give you a good slap across your cheek. Tighten up. You know what I'm saying? Because you sound retarded right now. Some people need somebody to grab hold to them and shake them and tell them, wake up and enter into reality. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're not dealing in reality. Niggas living in a false sense of reality that you've crafted in your own mind that you want to transponder to be reality. And in actuality, you're living in a fantasy world. And that's how people's dreams come crashing down on their head because you weren't living in reality. You know what I'm saying? You have to deal with reality. You can have what you want in your head and then you... See, some people call that being uh, pessimistic, but you have to be a realist. You know what I'm saying? You have what you would like. And then you have to take your circumstances, and then you have to see how what you're trying to accomplish, can you do that in spite of your circumstances? But then you have to look at your circumstance is, without the breath of Elohim, you're a dead man or woman walking. You know what I'm saying? So regardless of what you fashion in your head that you want to live in your natural life, are you thinking about the regeneration in the kingdom and come and how you're going to live in that life? And what are you going to do to make sure that your circumstances dictate that that's where you reside? And some people don't think about that because it's not their concern. You know, uh, since I mentioned that, Matthew chapter 13, just for the, for the, the purpose of the, of the illustrate what I'm talking about. Thirteen and twenty-two. He also that had received seed among the thorns is he that hear the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke off the word and he can't become and he become unfruitful. So of course we're talking about somebody who has made themselves poor and sold their inheritance by reason of their poverty. Now we looked at that as with, with Yasharal on Wednesday as one of the examples that she she made herself poor what when you look at the statement that he made that the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful what is the first thing that really comes across your mind when you hear the statement that Yahusha has just made Because what are you sitting back looking at? Why, is, why would these things choke the word? And what are they choking the word? What are they choking out of this particular seed? What are they choking from it? Because the cares of this life can get you in trouble real quick. Do you know what I'm saying? Real quick. Because you become unfocused. But when it say choke off the word, some of y'all know about gardening. So if he's saying these things going to choke off the seed, then how, what is it choking off from that seed? What is it not allowed? What is not being allowed to get to the seed? And what, what else does the seed need to be able to grow? So he's saying it's cutting off light and it's cutting off water. So then it's not allowing it to grow. So at this particular instance, you cutting off the word and you cutting off the ruach or the power of the word, which will not allow this seed to bring forth the manifestation of the fruit that this seed is supposed to bring. So that means it's going to choke off your joy. It's going to choke off your self-control. It's going to choke off your meekness. It's going to choke off your gentleness. It's going to choke off your goodness. It's going to choke off the faith. It's going to choke off the love of Elohim because you allow other things to come into to separate the light and the water that that seed needs to be able to grow. 
You know what I'm saying? Cause you cause, cause nigga get concerned with everything else. Man, I'm trying to tell you, I've been told you this here, man, that man don't care nothing about none of that stuff you trying to do or what you got going on. If it's gonna interfere with your service to him, that man don't care about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Period. And if he once once he get to a particular point, he'll give you over to what you want, just let you have it. But you're not gonna have him at the same token. So you have to be able to know how to be able to not get caught up in caring about what you're trying to do to the point where you sacrifice your hua. When you're supposed to be sacrificing what you want to do for your hua. Then if he wants to add that onto you, then he will do so. This is why he said to seek the kingdom first. He, it's nothing for this man to get. We got too many examples of this book of this man. Come on, man. This man, Samson, was around here just doing nothing. And he took this man and made him a judge. Gideon said, I'm the lowest man in my father's house. You know who this man is now. And he gave this man 17, 70 children from 17 different women and gave him riches and esteem of which you know who this man is, period. He took David from following sheep and the king. Saul was just a random dude in the, around the way and he made him a king. You know who this man is? It's nothing for that man to do any of that. And I don't think we necessarily believe that. That doesn't mean you sit around and you wait for him to do it. Stop it. Get it and, 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 and stay still. Get your car. Come get the car. Very well then. Now you have to think about that. That doesn't mean you sit back and like, oh, I'm waiting for him to bless me. The thing with David was he said he was a man after Elohim's own heart. So long before Yahuwah set him in that place, his heart was steadfast with Yahuwah. Long before that happened. Long before that happened. Long before he did that with Gideon, his heart was set with Yahuwah. That's why he did it. I don't think our mind be set with. That's why I wanted to focus on that part when he said he set the world in your heart. Does anybody remember that word for world? That we looked at last night. The word that was used for world in Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. I take it no one remembers. Very well. Then. The word was olam. That was the word for world in that particular verse. When you look at Olam, it was telling us how you be joined together to the leader of power, or joined to the power of Yahusha, mm -hmm. so to speak, or joined to that Ruach. It's taking us back to this wall city, which we're discussing. Because what is it doing? It's that wall city is protecting what? Those who are joined together to the power of breath, or the power of life. I go back to again what we mentioned in John 17, and we're going to read it again. John 17 and 23, and then Colossians chapter 2. That boy sound like he got something in his, in his bowels. John 17 and 23. I and them and thou and me that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. I by will that they also whom thou hast given me be, be with me where I am, that they may behold my esteem, which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Abba, the world have not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love whereas thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. So remember, this is the wall city that he's coming to purchase. He's coming to purchase the coma, the wall, or those who are protected by his breath of life. That's why he said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. He said, he prayed that he did what? Protect them from evil. Because where his Ruach is, that man is going to protect you. Why do you think in Revelation he told him, dude, go ahead and rest for a little season? To everybody else who got to die like you do die, because he's still protecting them even in death. Because we don't look at that because our lack of faith and trust in Elohim is so low that if somebody was to come and disrespect you, you feel the need to fight back. If somebody was coming and slandered your name, you feel the need to respond. If somebody was coming to kill you, you wouldn't sacrifice deliverance for a better resurrection like we read in Hebrews chapter 11. You would seek to free yourself because you don't trust in y'all like to really trust yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's really what it be come down to. Niggas really trust themselves. You're your own God. That's why you say your God is your belly, you mind earthly things. You can't say to Elohim that Yahuwah is your God because if he was, then you would mind things in Shamahim. Your, your God wouldn't be your base desires and the things that you want to do and the things that you want to, where you want to go and the things that you desire because they would become last. They wouldn't even be a priority to you. They would be at the bottom of the list. 
Do you know what I'm saying? When you look at Yahusha, his whole desire was to serve his father, not to serve himself. He could care less about what he wanted to do. Don't you think if he's a natural man that there would probably be a gambit of things that he would have liked to have done? Do you know what I'm saying? He wasn't concerned with that. My whole, he said, well, John chapter 6. I'll go to Colossians 2 in a moment and then Hebrew chapter 2. Six and thirty. They said, therefore, unto him, what sign show thou then that we may see and believe? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat man in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from Shamahim to eat. Then Yahushua said unto them, truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from Shamahim, but my Abba give you the true bread from Shamahim. For the bread of Elohim is he which come down from Shamahim and give life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Master, evermore give us this bread. And Yahushua said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that come to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father have give, give me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from Shamahim not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. See, and this, and we talked about this also, right? Of, I forget what word it was. Oh, the overplus, the adah. That you should know how to move. If you're the remaining excess that he has purchased, you're supposed to know how to move. You're supposed to know how to operate. And if you're supposed to know how to move and operate, then there's no way. Like you can have a bad decision or a bad mistake in certain, certain type of things. But if you weigh every decision and move you make against the word, your likelihood of making a mistake and bad decision is cut drastically to almost zero. Do you know what I'm saying? To almost zero. If you make every decision that you're going to make, if you weigh it against the word first, before you weigh it against anything else, your likelihood of failure should be non-existent. It should be non-existent. If you catch yourself making decisions and you ain't weighed it by the word first, you're doing your own will. You're doing your own will. You're doing what you want to do. Because it didn't even pop into your brain. Let me weigh this against the word first before I make a decision. Then after you weigh it against the word, then what's the next thing the book tell you you're supposed to do? He say before making word, to make war, to go get counsel. Then you got to make sure the person who give you counsel is going to weigh it according to the word and not a personal opinion or perspective. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're going to get counsel from a nigga, he telling you how he feel, and they supposed to be in the word with you, and the word never came up in the course of the conversation, you have two idiots having a conversation. You don't have two spiritual people having a conversation. You have two carnal minds, because if we carnal minded, we're an idiot, because that means we know what time it is, and we're too stupid enough to realize that this is what we ought to choose. That's what would make us an idiot. Do you know what I'm saying? If we're supposed to be spiritual people, that does the book say we compare spiritual things with spiritual. So we would be comparing the word with the practicality of what we're attempting or desiring to go do. And whatever it is. And that will eliminate your chance of making a bad decision. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a conversation with my homeboy in Detroit about this a long time ago. Do you know what I'm saying? And he brought that up when he was preaching to his congregation and they looked at him like he was stupid. He was like, yeah, if I judge everything by the word, I feel like my success rate and whatever I'm doing should be 100%. You know what I'm saying? Unless, unless you have a situation like, say, like Samson's decision to want to mess with that woman. Somebody would look at that as, as a failure, but it was actually a success rate because it was of Yahuwah, because he was trying to stir up controversy between Yasharal and the Philistines so he could destroy the Philistines. So in the execution of Yah's will, it was perfect. It was a perfect decision. You know what I'm saying? In the eyesight of a natural man, that was a, not a perfect decision. Yahusha getting captured, beaten, killed, and then resurrected from the dead, if you put the resurrection part out to play. To the natural eyes, that was not a perfect decision for him to go make that move. But according to the will of Yahuwah, it was a perfect decision for him to do that. Because what did he say? It's written that this must happen to me. How will the scriptures be fulfilled? He did not look at the fact that I didn't want to die. He raised his decision. He weighed his decision based off what was written and then followed that. 
Do you know what I'm saying? And when he followed that, what happened to him? Three days later, he rose from the dead, and now all men have the opportunity to live forever through this man's name. Do you know what I'm saying? But it comes down to, do you, what, what got, even though it wasn't a written word, what got Moses in trouble? He didn't weigh his decision based off the word. The people made him mad, and he reacted off of his thought process and his emotions by doing what? Striking the rock instead of speaking to it like he told him to. You know what I'm saying? What got Rehoboam in trouble? He had wise men telling him exactly what to do according to the word, and he chose to listen to his friends. End up getting him killed. You know what I'm saying? What happened with Ahab? What got him in trouble? Instead of weighing stuff according to the word, he listened to his wife. You know what I'm saying? You supposed to wait. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I still got Hebrews 2 and Colossians 2 coming. Deuteronomy 4 and, uh, 4 and 4. He say, but ye that cleave unto you who your Elohim are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgments, even as you who are my Elohim commanded me, that you should go do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. And by verse 4, he said, if you keep these statutes and do them, that this will show that this is a wise and understanding people. So if you're keeping these statutes and you're doing them, then that means everything you're doing is going to be weighed according to what is written. Not according to how you feel, not according to what you think, or not according to what you want to do. Proverbs 4 and 4. He taught me also and said unto me, let thy heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom and get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Well, somebody phone echoing again, man. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee, love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Darius phone on there. You can cut the comment call off. All right. No, that's what that was. Then. They say, "Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee." Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. When he tell you that wisdom is the principal thing, what is he telling you? Who knows in, in any way in English, what does it mean when he say the word principle means in English? Let's see if you got that app on your phone. You got that app on your phone there? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Let me tell you that in English. Does anybody know what principle means in English? In the context of what is, of what is uh, let's say you need internet connection. You ain't got no internet connection. Oh, I mean, you got to go to my set. First thing, chief thing. What'd you say, Will? It's the first, the key, the most important thing. The most important thing. So the most important thing that you need to be getting is wisdom. Now, what is wisdom? That's the ability to know how to fight. And what did Solomon write in Proverbs chapter 1 when he spoke about wisdom? He told you that the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And Job told you departing from evil is what? In the 28th chapter of Job, in the 28th verse, he told you departing is evil from what? You got only got two things to choose from for what we're talking about. It's either wisdom or understanding. Understanding. You know what I'm saying? So, and when you sit, and again, this is knowing how to move if you're the overplus. And you know what I'm talking about? Again, of course, if you're that wall that he purchased, then you're going to be what? You're going to be protected by the joining together of the power of life. So if you fear Yahuwah, that means you have wisdom. That means you reverence, honor, and respect him. If you fear and honor and reverence your father, Malachi chapter 1 and about verse 6. 
you're going to do what we're going to read in Malachi 1 and 6. If you have understanding from departing from evil, then you understand the plan. So when you departing from evil and you reverence and honor and respect this man, that means you weighing this man word according to your decision making or doing what Yahushua just said. I didn't come down here to do my own will. I came to do the will of him that sent me. And this is an actuality in reality. This is still going back to what we talked about during Unleavened Bread. The poor and the Ruach. Theirs is the kingdom of Elohim. Those who have made themselves lowly. Those who have humbled themselves under the mighty hand of Elohim. Because we look to exalt ourselves, but then say we humbling ourselves under Elohim while doing our own will at the same time. And that is impossible. It says, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If I then be an Abba, where's my honor? And if I be a master, where's my fear? Say if you who of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name, and ye said, wherein have we despised by name? He said, you offer polluted bread upon my altar, and say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say, the table of Yahuwah is contemptible. When he says that they offer polluted bread upon his altar, what would, what would that mean? Well, he said, no, he would say, if you offered polluted bread. So your sacrifice part is correct. He said, you offered polluted bread on my altar. So what does he mean? You have blemishes in what you came to offer. You know this take us back to when we talked about during, um, when we read every time before you get ready to eat that, eat that bread and drink that wine. Don't do this unworthily because this is polluted bread you bringing on my offer, uh, on my altar. And you looking at pollution, you coming to sacrifice yourself with all manner of sin in it, all manner of blemishes in it. This man don't want it. Because he said, look at the clear thing that he said, if I be a father, then where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? He said, but you despise my name because you will not respect me nor give me the honor due to me. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you want to do what you want to do, how you want to do it, and put my name on it. You know what I'm saying? But we talking about us being the overplus. So if you adopt, then you know how to move. You're not going to move in that type of fashion. You know what I'm saying? If you the Komar, you that wall of which he purchased, then you're going to be protected by being joined together to the power of life, which is what we just read in John 17. That man going to protect you from, namely, from death, which it should be your number one concern. Do you know what I'm saying? I just heard brothers talking about certain stuff and they see certain stuff. Niggas is concerned about everything other than not dying. Do you know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. You know what I'm saying? Your concern should be not dying. And I'm not talking about dying in the fact that your body returns back to the dust from whence it came. I'm talking about the second death. Niggas is not concerned with not dying. Do you know what I'm saying? All the capping and the flodging and the frauds and all that type of stuff. That junk there is disgusting and despicable to view. You know what I'm saying? Because you're talking about literally, see, it's a lot different, right? And like you say, if your environment was different, I was talking to brother in Massachusetts, he was like, yeah, man, you rare to talk about you've never been to church. You've never been in that type of environment. Because you know what that church environment probably breathes in a lot of people when it comes to the work? That it's cool to be a hypocrite and flodge in front when it comes to this. Nobody really has a problem with it. So when you transfer over to you claiming you in the truth, you bring that type of mindset with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's quite natural to bring that with you because that's all you see, especially if the people who are around you, when you make that transition from being in the church to being in the truth, they doing the same thing. When you come from a different environment with a different mindset, then you're going to approach it differently. That's why the, the publicans and the harlots approach Yahusha differently than the scribes and Pharisees approached them. You know what I'm saying? Because the scribes and the Pharisees were more concerned with the esteem of men and to be seen of men. So their approach to Yahushua was going to be drastically different than the people who were broken, the people who were hurt and, and, and destroyed by their sin looking for a way out of it. You know what I'm saying? When they seen it, they said, oh, yeah, I'm riding with him. All that extra stuff y'all talking about, this, that, and the third, I ain't studying none of that. I'm going with him. The case in point is the key is the put. That man say, look here, man. If I, over, if I overcharge a man, I give him back four times. He say, but I don't take nothing from no other man. I don't do none of that. Because all he was concerned with, he heard what the man was preaching. He was desirous to see this man so bad he climbed in a tree so he could see him. 
Because his mindset of where he was coming from was different than the mindset of, of, of the other people. I'm coming from a mindset, I ain't never been in that environment of people falling all on the floor, faking Holy Ghost, and talking in an undiscernible language, and you know what I'm talking about? Saying one thing and doing another, I ain't come from that. You know what I'm saying? We came from, this is what you say you do? Well, if you don't do it, nigga gonna test you on that. You know what I'm talking about? You say you a gangster? Well, a nigga gonna try you to see if you a gangster. You say you hustle? Well, we gonna see if you hustle or not. That's where they come from. So you had to be your authentic self. Because if you were not your authentic self, you got clowned. If you said you was about something and you didn't do it, you got disrespected and nobody would fool with you. Do you know what I'm saying? So then you come to doing that, which is bringing the same mindset over to that. It's not nothing extra special. It's just environment and situation and circumstance. If I grew up in a church all my life, I might have the same mind frame that people in the church have. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, sure, you know, it's just a process. It don't matter if it take me 10 years to get right. You know what I'm saying? Like, where do you even get it in your mind that it take you 10 years to, to modify your behavior? Not even say modify, but to completely change your behavior. Why does it take you 10 years to unlearn a negative behavior? It shouldn't take you that long if you were earnestly desiring to do so. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we say that this word heals all our diseases. Ain't that what the word said? Heal all your diseases? So how could you be in a word, reading a word, consuming a word, hearing a word, and then it's not healing your disease? Should it heal your disease in six months? No, that ain't what I'm saying, but it shouldn't take four or five years, though. Do you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't take four or five years. You shouldn't be an immature person in the word in year five as you were in year one. There should be some manner of maturation, spiritual maturation, first and foremost that we don't necessarily get and we don't necessarily see because our hearts are banded about by so many different things. Like what he told, told Martha about Mary. He said, your heart is consumed with many different things. He said, but Mary chosen the best part and that won't be taken away from her. You know what I'm saying? Because our heart be carried about with many different things. Do we actually, this, when I used to preach in the street, I used to go to people and ask them that all the time. You believe that Matthew chapter five or chapter six? Y'all know what he said in Matthew six, right? Take no thought for your what? For your life. Do you really believe that? Do you know what I'm saying? I used to ask people that. You really believe? He said, see, brother, you got to deal in reality. I know the nigga don't believe that. Like, that's a real hallmark test of where your faith at. Because he even said that, oh, ye of little faith. If you know this man feeding animals, man, animals, man. Psalms tell you the animals come out of their dens and get their food and go back. Nigga, he created you in the image. You mean to tell me you don't believe? And you say this man your father and you don't think he going to feed you? You don't think he going to clothe you? You don't think he going to house you? This what you worried about? He said, which one of you by taking one thought can add one cubit to your stature? Not now, one of you niggas can. Because I don't care what plan you put together. I don't care how perfect it is. Y'all can say, it ain't happening. And it's not happening. And you'd be frustrated and beating your head up against the wall. And I'm going to let you keep beating your head up against the wall because you refuse to turn to me. That's all he be trying to get you to do. That man can do anything he want, when he want, how he want. Is anything too hard for you? Who No. No. I was talking to somebody who was like, you know, it's ways around for a woman not to get pregnant. Yeah, you could make sure you pick not to have sex on certain days. You know what I'm saying? The when you're less fertile than others. But if that man gonna open up your womb, it's good and open. I don't care what you do. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't care how many condoms you put on. I don't care how many birth control pills you take. I don't care what you pump in your body. Do you know what I'm talking about? The only way it ain't gonna happen is if you get your ovaries removed. Do you know what I'm saying? It's dudes who done had uh, vasectomies and they related still got pregnant. Because you can't stop it. Not if that's his will. You sit back and look at it, right? Who, what, was, uh, what was Rachel and Leah beefing about? One of the, one of the sons of, of Jacob grabbed a particular plan, and they were beefing about it. Anybody know what that plan was? She couldn't have babies at the time. Will just said it, but y'all didn't hear him. Y'all know what plan it is? Huh? Mandrakes. And you know what mandrakes are for? For fertility. And guess what? Rachel was taking the man drinks and guess what happened? Ain't no baby come out till y'all said it was time for one. Till he said it was time for Joseph to come. She wasn't coming. Why was Rachel's womb closed? <coughs> that, but it's a specific reason, according to the text, why Rachel's womb was closed. Does anybody know why Rachel's womb was closed? You know why Rachel's womb was closed? That is correct. He loved Leah more than he loved Rachel. So he, that's what I mean. And he opened Leah's womb and closed Rachel's. 
Straight up and down. It's as simple as that. And it is exactly what it says. He loved Rachel more than Leah. He closed Rachel's womb up. You won't get no babies. Straight up. How many, and, and how many kids did, Ra did Leah have? Like six or seven. Because Rachel only had two. This is a whole nother conversation, too. Because if Rachel only had two, what would that be pointing to? I'm going to see how sharp he is. What that point? What two wives? What, what you mean? I ain't talking about no two wives. No, I ain't even talking about Judah and Israel. Ain't Judah and Israel there. You know what it is, D? <laughs> Go ahead, D. <laughs> he partially right. What you got, D? And I can give you that. Because the first son is the take away reproach. And the last son is the son of my right hand. So I can take that. But you know what it really point to? When the kingdom got split, how did it split? Remember the two is what's important. If she had two and she was the wife that Rachel, that Rachel is the wife that Jacob chose. The one who he loved the most. When the kingdom split, how did they split? Not how did they split? They split because of David. They split because of Solomon. When he split them, how did they split? How many tribes went where? Oh, that's all. I didn't know what you was asking. Yeah, the, 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 the Ten tribes went this way, and two went that way. And what were the two that went this way? It's Judah and Benjamin. The praise and the son of my right hand, they went over there. Then when you look at the praise, what did the praise come in, what you just mentioned with Joseph? Because that's... Alahim has taken away my reproach. Therefore, you praise Alahim because he took away your sin. Where does Benjamin come in? The son of my right hand because the sin is taken away. And now you can be able to be the what? The son of his right hand. But we'll deal with that another day. Come on back, Colossians. We'll pray the land. Two and five, Colossians two and five. And the only reason why I mentioned that with, with Rachel the Cardinal, be wanting to know it don't matter what you want to do if it ain't y'all's will. And that you should make sure that or realize that don't let all that extra stuff come in the way. Like I, it was a brother, he just had the video on where he was talking about a dude, and he may talk about the camps, is what he was talking about. You know, some of the camps on Passover, they'll have the women come out there, you know, they kind of exaggerated how they went down. It wasn't as bad as it looked upon first glance, but it was basically like what you call it, a meet and greet. So people who were single uh, come out and say they single, but it looked like they ought to women to be married. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, these niggas more concerned about getting people married because that produced more kids and then you get more members. You know what I'm saying? I can't speak to that's what niggas intentions was. Indeed it is. And that's a lot of forethinking to go through all that. You know what I'm talking about? But, you know, hey, I can't say it's yay. I can't say it's nay. But what I can say is the brother would like one dude say, oh, these. And if you got a lot of Hebrew dudes on your page, you probably see it a lot. When niggas be like, oh, the black woman don't want to listen. She don't want to obey. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no good women out here, this, that, that, and the third. And niggas say, maybe the problem is you. Maybe you're not as righteous as you think you are, and then that's why you ain't getting what you desire. You know what I'm talking about? But it's just the main fact of what the brother was pointing at is, is so many niggas be worrying about so many different things versus worrying about what they need to attain salvation. You know what I'm saying? Because he was like, and he said the brother came back later and said, I was just frustrated, man, because I ain't got married yet. And he was like, man, well, why don't you just focus on your hood instead of worrying about that? You know what I'm talking about? Because, see, the women don't necessarily get online and go as hard as dudes go. I'm talking about dudes in the word. But dudes in the word go hard. Oh, the nigga woman won't listen. The nigga woman is that. The nigga woman is this. You know what I'm saying? That's what these niggas really say. They do say, am I lying? Yeah, they do say the B word, too. No, they say nigga woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say the nigga woman. Oh, they'll say that Eve. See, see, Eve don't want to submit. Eve don't want to listen. The nigga woman. I wish I were lying, but I ain't. 
I wouldn't want a nigga woman. I just wouldn't want a woman. <laughs> But they say that to be derogatory and as disrespectful as they possibly can. That's why a lot of people think that the brother might be homosexual. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can't disagree with that theory. Somebody who spends all their time bashing the opposite sex, whether you male or female, there's a strong likelihood that you possibly could be a homosexual. You know what I'm saying? Because how could, when you look at, I heard, I forgot, who was I listening to? What was I listening to? It was somebody from the civil rights movement, and I feel exactly where they're coming from. I myself personally could not be married to someone who is not a, a, a Negro, that is not black. I couldn't do it. Absolutely not. I couldn't do it. No, 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 no. There's a lot of them want to, that's why they include different nationality, people that borderline if they're Negro or not. That, but who cares? I mean, marry what you like. You know what I'm saying? I don't care nothing about that. I couldn't do it because I felt like this as a teenager, no other woman on the face of this planet could ever understand me in any capacity other than my own kind. You know what I'm saying? This woman would not be able to relate to me and what I'm dealing with and what I'm facing and vice versa. I can be able to relate to her and what she's dealing with because we face the same plight together. A white woman could never relate to me and nor could I ever relate to her. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and shoot, she can relate to you, nigga. You go here and get you, get you old white woman. <laughs> go and get you a white woman. Go get you a white woman. That woman ain't black. That woman white. <laughs> She used to be on Oprah. She was on Oprah one time. Basically just showing that she was the one that made a white girl cry in the classroom. I don't know her name either. All I know, all you need to do is put a, uh, no, nah, all you gotta do is put, all you gotta do is put racist, racist, Race experiment on Oprah, and, and that'll probably do it for you. Because she was on Oprah. Yeah, she was on Oprah. But you know what I'm saying? Yes, she is. You know what I'm saying? But, but that, because not what, oh, not what, that's who I was listening It was Muhammad Ali. It was Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali was just telling the individual in an interview he did in the 60s, like, a blue bird is not going to mate with a red bird. A red bird is not going to mate with a pigeon. You're going to see a pigeon with a pigeon, a blue bird with a blue bird, a red bird with a red bird. It's only when you get to human beings that they feel like it's wrong for somebody to say, I want to be with my own kind. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, that's only stray dogs. Because if you put dogs in their natural habitat and you never fool with them and mess with them, they're going to mate with their own kind. Because that's nature. You don't see, you know what I'm saying? It's different types of pigs, but you don't see a wild boar trying to mate with a domesticated pig because they stick with their own kind, even though they are the same family. He very may well, but some of them different. Shoot, nigga. It's like you very rarely see homosexual animals in the wild. What? Yeah, because that's not natural. Yeah, but a lot of the vital different animals came from human beings crossbreeding them. They're not going to do that naturally. Well, dogs come from what? From canine or from wolves and jackals. And white people like to grab animals and fool with them and make them do the same way they cross pollinate plants. Because yeah. by nature, y'all didn't make animals to go cross their genders. What does our law say, right? Don't our law say don't even mix seeds? Because it causes what? Confusion. That's not y'all's will. You go with your kind, I go with mine. Like, I wouldn't be mad if a white man came to me and say, I only want a white woman. Well, salute to you, sir. Salute to you. I ain't mad at you for saying that. 
I don't know why we get upset about that. There's nothing wrong with it. If a white man came to me and said, I only want to marry a white woman, why would I be mad at him for that? You know what I'm saying? Well, I can tell you now, the dogs we see now, they probably were not even around 1,500 years ago. Do you know what I'm saying? They weren't even around. They didn't even exist. No, I mean, that ain't speculation. You can historically find out where most of these dogs came from. And 2,000 years ago, majority of the breeds of dogs that we see now did not exist. I didn't say every animal. Because most of these animals was here. You know what I'm saying? The same way they were looking at something earlier, which you all know this here. Like, I can remember in the 90s when they were talking about them white folks saying they cloned the sheep. Cloned the sheep. You know, this was in the 90s. Cloned. A sheep. Y'all forgot what they named the sheep. Yeah, that's what it was. Then they came out and said they cloned the monkey. So, you know, if they come out publicly and tell you that they did this, they've been doing it behind the scenes for probably about 30, 40 years. You know what I'm saying? Say what? No, we saying it's certain breeds, certain breeds. And I guarantee you, York is old crossbreed. Yeah, they mix it. And I say that, and, and I'm sitting here telling you, right? God, how you want to look at it. That mixing of breeds and species that comes from man because these animals are not going to naturally do that on their own. They're going to naturally be attracted to their own kind. A lion is not going to go try to meet a uh, mate with a jaguar. You know what I'm saying? A jaguar is not going to go mate with a tiger. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that because that's not how y'all made them. Of course, guess what, right? If you take these animals... If you take these animals, right, and you crossbreed them with each other, then now you begin to mess with the genetics and the natural pheromones and all that stuff, how these animals operate, and then they begin, begin to be attracted to an animal who's not of their kind. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the same token, right? To the, it's an extreme example. Because homosexuality is promoted so hard, and then people do it, that's why somebody can feel like it's it's cool for me to go have sex with a man or a woman when naturally that's not how you're wired. You're not wired to do that because the minute we say that that animal does this or does that, we just blaspheme. We say y'all done made a mistake and call that which is good evil because he did not make these animals to do that. All we got to do is go look in our law. What did he tell Noah to get? Animals of the male and female after their own kind. If it didn't matter, he would have just throw them niggas on there. Pay attention. The stuff be right there in our faith. Pay attention. That's why I be telling y'all certain stuff. Know the law. Know your God. Not for the specific of knowing knowledge, but knowing so one, you don't blaspheme, and two, you understand his plan. Because you're supposed to understand his plan. That's what understanding is. That's why he say wisdom is the what? The principal thing. But get understanding. Understanding is knowing his plan. You know his plan. No man can deceive you. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm telling you, man. White folks do crazy stuff when it comes to science. They do crazy stuff, man. Because they want to produce things to do whatever it is that they got going on. Don't see that other Asians don't do it. Cause better believe them Asians and them Arabs, they around here in labs doing crazy stuff too. It's a lot of monkeys we probably see are not natural. You know what I'm saying? As forth as that's how they were made, it was the crossbreed. Yeah, don't crossbreed. That's what I lost you. Y'all told us not to crossbreed. For no other reason, because get what? It bre you're going to be going to be confused. Not confused as forth as who you should mess with, but confused in what God you serve. Go on here, get your old Asian woman. Don't see if you be at the Buddhist temple. Go on, get you a black woman who a Christian. Bet you be at a Christmas party, mass service if she Catholic. They do that. Yeah. For both cultures. Christians do it. 
I've seen a Jewish person marry a Catholic, and they have a Jewish wedding and a Catholic wedding. See, I ain't doing all of that. And guess what happens after that? The children get confused because whose viewpoint is going to dominate? Whose viewpoint going to dominate? But people don't be, the reason why, you know why that's the case? Because what I just told you, if you've been raised to be a hypocrite and not firm in your service to God, it doesn't matter. Because you're only a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim in name, not in practice. I would tell my the brother in Massachusetts just the other day too, right? Girl I messed with when I was 17. Me and her were having a conversation, like, right after I started dealing with the words. She would like to say, she said, I know you're doing it. I said, how you know I'm doing it, nigga? I said, nigga, I could be capping. Not all that posting don't mean nothing. Her response was, nigga, I know you. What can I say to that? Do you know what I'm saying? What can I say? To I can't say none of that because I was just playing the opposite side of the coin. Just because individual posting or speaking on information don't mean I'm living that, though. She said, nigga, I know you. She just no period that I'm not going to speak about what I don't do. Then she made a post later referring to some people speak religion and some people practice it. See, some people, they just speak I'm a Jew. Speak I'm a Christian, speak I'm a Muslim, speak I'm a Catholic, but they don't actually practice it. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas say, I'm in the truth, I'm an Israelite, I'm a Hebrew, but they don't practice it. And practice just means application, doing. That's it. That's it. Colossians 2 and 5, that's it. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the Ruach, joining and beholding your order in the steadfastness of your faith in Mashiach. As you have therefore received Yahushua HaMashiach, the master, so walk ye in him. Remember, we talked about you ought to know how to move. Remember the thing we talked about walking in him. The compassion, the mercy, the steadfastness, the faith, the hope, the trust, the, the rebuke, and the sanctification that came through walking in the word and numerous other things. Rooted and built up in him, having established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the removements of the world, and not after Mashiach. For in him dwell all the fullness of Elohim's head bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So if you complete in him, what word will we use for complete that we've dealt with in the past? It also means to be perfect. It also means to be whole. What'd you say? Tam or Tamayim. That means to be complete, to be whole, to be whole. You know what I'm saying? When you in this man, you can, and what does that take us back to the wall that he's purchased? So whom have he purchased? We read in Ephesians chapter one last night too. Hello, Abigail. Who has he purchased? He's purchased those who are protected and joined together of the power of life. Come over here to uh, Hebrews 2. Come on, Abbott. How you doing, Tabby? Uh, Hebrews 2 and about, uh, 2 and about, uh, 9, you should say. Hebrews 2 and 9. But we see Yahushua, who was made a little lower than the Malachim for the suffering of death, crowned with esteem and honor that he by con of Elohim should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. And bringing many sons unto esteem to make the captain of the salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified, all, all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So when you sit back and you look at this, right, when you're joined, if he, if, if you, if, if Yahushua is sanctified and you are sanctified through Yahushua, then you are one with him and therefore one with Elohim. 
Therefore, this is how you're joined together to the power of life because he tasted death for every man so you don't have to taste it. Let's come back to Leviticus 25. Oh, what you got to do on your set is to cut that on because uh, I ain't never did that before. I don't cut nothing off on mine. I'm in sentence. But I sell you. I hear you, man. <coughs> hey, baby. Hey, Papa. So, grab, grab your chair, buddy. Mm hmm. Come on back to Leviticus 25 and 29. So remember, right, we're looking at if a man sell a dwelling house. Now, the next word that we have is dwelling. We have that already lined up for you. Prime, ready to go. It's Moshav. When we look at dwelling, what would that mean for you, Moshav? M-O-W-S-H-A-B. I had it written over here somewhere. I think it's in. Oh, there we go. It means seat, assembly. Or, or sitting company. Keep that in mind in the next place we bought the head. Moshe, how would we spell it? Mm -hmm. In the bot. So for men, we're we, we going to say what? Power, right? I would say power. Dwelling. Let's say power, right? So what's the next thing we, for U, what would we use again? I would say we would probably use being joined together or possibly sacrifice. We shall see. But with Sean, what would we use? I think the sacrifice would be better suited for U that we could use being joined or paired with uh, for the Sean and not destroy. And then with Bot, we wouldn't say house. What would we say? Because this ain't a necessarily a thing to say house for. What's one of the meanings for, uh, for Bot? Uh, we got a family. Family. The son. So we will use family or we will use son because this word means what? A sitting, a seat, assembly, or a sitting company. So I think that we will use family. Reason why we use family based off what we just read in Hebrew chapter 2, based off what we just read in uh, Colossians chapter 2 about being perfect and one in the Elohim head of being part of his family. Let's go to son in Ephesians chapter 3. What's up, little Henry? You look like you finna go listen with it. You finna go listen with it. You look like you did some push up for your cane. You did some push up for your cane. You look a little swole. You look a little swole. That nigga gonna be a big boy. Strong man. You see this hip? That could be a strong man. Strong man. Strong man. Where I said I was going. <clears throat> yeah, three and about seventeen. I want to say. I got me so I got the right spot for it. Three and fourteen, actually. Three and fourteen. He say, "For this cause I bow my knees unto Abba, of our Master." Yahushua HaMashiach, of whom the whole family uh, in Shamahim and Arat's is named. <coughs> now let's take, a, let's take a trip down to, uh, uh, through this law. When he say the whole family of Shamahim and Arat's is named after Mashiach, what are two places in the law that we can look here to back that up and verify that? And what two individuals out the law could we look at to back up and verify that? Very well then. Genesis chapter 5. And how, and how is the whole family of the earth named after Adam? Based off of what? Uh, uh, based off of what saying? Yeah, he did that there, but I'm talking about based off of, well, let's say what name or based off what title? 
Anybody else want to roll it that one up? It's simple, too. And you're going to be like, dang, how did I miss that one? Let's just see. Hold on. <laughs> he was serious about whatever he was trying to express. Genesis 5 and 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that Elohim created man in the likeness of Elohim, made he him. Male and female created he them and Baruch them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So let's look and see how we can see that the whole family of the earth was named after Adam. John chapter 10. Let me make sure that's the right spot. I might have to too. No. No, John 10 ain't going to do it for me. Let me see which one we're going to use. There we go. We'll use Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. So we see how he said in the book of generations, right? That everybody named after Adam. It was named, uh, he called Adam and Eve Adam. So that family was named after Adam. This is also pulling in where you can look at to see how the whole earth or all the nations of the earth are, regardless if they're, they're Israelite or not. See, this is where a lot of camp mess the game up. You don't, you still are part of Adam, whether you're Israelite or not. Adam is not an Israelite specific race. Would you say? It's definitely not. Because before there was an Israelite, there was an Adam. Let's look and see. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole wrath. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. That statement, Son of Man, what does it mean? You know what that statement mean, D? When he say Son of Man, it should say what? Son of Adam. He's going to say son of Adam. When he still kept saying son of man, son of man, he was saying he was a son of Adam. When we go look at his genealogy, let's look at Yahushua's genealogy. We already in Luke. Let's look at Luke chapter one and let's see the first person named in this man genealogy. Or Luke chapter three. Let's see the first person named in this man genealogy. Well, it's not the first person named in this genealogy, but the last person in verse 38, who's the last person named in this genealogy? The first person to start with, as it was supposed in verse 23, that Joseph was his father, who was the son of Eli, or Heli. Then it went to Mathad and Levi and Malachi and Yana and Joseph and Matthias and Amos and Nahum. And all the way down when you get to verse 38, it stopped with who? Adam. It stopped with who? Adam. Let's go to Matthew chapter, chapter 1. No, we can't use Matthew 1 because Adam ain't there. It started with Abraham with, with, uh, and Matthew chapter 1. Now, why would y'all think there'd be the difference in Matthew 1? It's listing Abraham. It starts with Abraham, Abraham and ends with... Uh, with Joseph, but in Luke it starts with Joseph and ends with Adam because it's a lot of dispute with why is it two different genealogies so why do y'all think it's two different genealogies one starts with Abraham and one starts with Adam why because niggas argue. Some niggas say, see, the one in Luke, that's Mary's genealogy. And the other one is Joseph. That's why it's two. But today you're going to find out why it's two. Matthew chapter 1, it literally starts with who? It starts with Abraham, right? Luke chapter 3 starts with Joseph. Now see, Matthew chapter 1 starts with Abraham, ends with Joseph. Luke chapter 3 starts with Joseph and ends with Adam. Why? The one with the faith? So I was asked a question. Like, so if they didn't have the uh, genealogy of Mary, Mary, That's all speculation that comes from men. Muffin, do you have an answer why you think that it, 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 it starts with Abraham one and starts with Adam on the other? In actuality, I've already told you the answer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Dwight, you got any idea you got to answer that question? One genealogy starts with Abraham. One genealogy starts with Adam. Why? Putin tame. He said, ask him again. He'll tell you the same. He must have took your answer. Darius already gave his answer. Why? One G Yeah, that was hilarious. She came strong too. You better get Mar. He finna pour the whole cup out. Yeah, you put too much in there. I know he is, but it ain't good enough for him to walk around with. It ain't a good it, he ain't the go cup ready. <laughs> yeah, he ain't the go cup ready. So Deidre, you got one genealogy to start with Abraham and one to start with Adam. Why? I waited nobody probably ever thought about it or even paid attention that one star wave and one star wave. Very well. Go ahead, Callie. Stanley, you already answered. You got something for me, Mom? <laughs> what about you, sir? Mm -hmm. Let's show from Adam. Let's show from Abraham and show how you can feel that to see the uh, uh, Israel to see the day. He was going to come in and show from Adam and show how he was sent from the beginning, how he still the son of God after, after Adam. Very well. Lee, Lee, you, you, got, you want to roll the die? You sure? You positive? You affirmative? <laughs> what about you, Glover? Well, y'all yeah. well, pretty much hit that on the head for the most part. But some of y'all, not all y'all, but it's all right, though. Some of y'all stole each other's answers. But it's okay. I'm just talking. But, uh, Let's look at that. Because one with Abraham, he's going to show from Abraham for one reason and one reason alone. Because we need to understand it from the law. How many of y'all heard that one genealogy is Joseph and one genealogy is Mary's? You done heard that before? You done heard that before? That's what people say. They say, why the genealogy is different? Because you got one genealogy and they say, oh, that's Mary's own. Because that 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 Indeed, people who try to show. Yeah, but what it is is basically what we just hit. One is taking you back to the beginning because Adam is not mentioned. Neither is Noah. Neither is Methuselah. Neither is Enoch. All this stuff is taking you back to the beginning because he got the link to Adam. He was calling himself the son of man. He's got the link back to that because the whole family of the earth is named after Adam. And we just read in Genesis 5. So it has to, you got to get back to him. The one that's starting with Abraham is because it didn't need to start nowhere because the promise for Yasharal to be the seed started with who? Abraham. So I don't need to mention all these other people before Abraham because they're irrelevant to this particular point. You know what I'm saying? But one of them, we got to tie, because if we don't tie it back to Adam, then guess we guess what we can't say about Yahushua then? We can't say he the second Adam because we have no tie to get us back to him. So therefore, he can't be that wall or that dwelling place or any of these things. Therefore, he, because you know what? And another reason, a bonus question. Why does he have to tie back to Adam? And we talked about this last week. Why does he have to tie back to Adam? 
Because Yasharal broke the covenant, right? So there has to be a redeemer to, to, to buy back Yasharal for breaking the covenant, correct? So why does it have to tie back to Adam then? Everybody dies because of this. So we have to have a way because every see everybody wasn't a part of the covenant of Jacob and Isaac and Abraham. But everybody dies. Everybody dies. Everybody got that covenant with death and they had nothing to do with it because of one man. So that's why Adam has to be there to tie that back so he can be that second Adam to reverse death for every man. And that's what can't miss that. Oh, it's only for Israel. Nobody. No. Because if it was only for Israel, people were dying before Abraham was thought about. People were dying before Isaac was thought about. People were dying before Jacob was thought about. But every single solitary race of people on this earth go back to Adam. And that you can't deny that. You can't deny that. That's how niggas get killed into my salvation only for Israel. Are you sure? Are you positive? Because that, that, that Asian man can say he is son of Adam and not be lying. No, he's not. But the reason why they state that is because he made a covenant for him and his seed, and we are those of his seed. So that's why they, that's how they work it. Well, Genesis 12, though, she ain't lying, but that's how they work it, though. They tried now. Nigga tried good. So now you can know from that point forward, nigga can't come and tell you, oh, that's Mary's genealogy. No, that's still Yahushua genealogy, you big dummy. You big dummy. And through that, it shows that, I, I get it. Matter of fact, don't even worry about it. Genesis 12 and 1, right? It said, Now he who has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy Abba's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will root thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is the beginning of y'all stepping to Abraham, right? Now we can go read. Genesis 26 and 1 and see him confirm that covenant with Isaac, right? Then we can go read Genesis 32 or 35 and see him confirming it with Jacob. We already read in Genesis chapter 5 where he said he named the whole family of the earth after Adam. Now who's the second person who, who her whole family is named after? Who's another person got a whole family named after him that is important? as pertaining to Mashiach because it said in Ephesians that the whole family of the earth is named after the Mashiach very well let's see how let's take this Romans chapter 9 trip No, it's actually Romans 11. My bad. 11. Let me start at probably about verse 16. And then I'll move around. For if the first fruit be Kadash, and the lump is also Kadash, and if the root be Kadash, so are the branches. If some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bear not the root, but the root thee. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou stand by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Elohim on them which fail severity, but towards thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Now, we were talking about this here, and I'm going to get to it in a minute. I got to get to it before we depart from here. I got time. It's 433. Uh, was Yasharal cut off? Why were they cut off? Because they broke the covenant. Did he have a covenant agreement with any of the other nations? Were they, but were the nations in a covenant with you who were regardless? Yes, they were. I ain't going to say necessarily with you who were, but they were with, in a covenant with you who were. Because what did you who say if you sin, what got to happen to you? You got to die. In Isaiah, he was speaking to Yasharal specifically. He said he'll disannul your covenant with who? 
with death. So the nations were in covenant with Yahuwah regardless because they were going to die. Because they were doing what? They were sinning against him. Now whether they were knowing they were sinning against him or not knowing was grossly irrelevant according to Romans 2, correct? See, but see, that's the whole key thing. But see, Romans 2, but Romans 2 say that those who without the law will perish without the law. So regardless of you not knowing or knowing, you in agreement on it because you under heaven and earth. So you in agreement. The reason why I use that statement is because when we look at the Torah and we look at them taking out the Canaanites, they perish without the law. I seen a dude say, well, why didn't y'all give him an opportunity to hear it? I say, ask him, nigga. Well, I didn't tell them that, but they perished without it, though. But guess what? Rahab ain't have no law, but she was saved without it because she did the things that are naturally contained in the law because she believed. So she was spared. You know what I'm talking about? But all them Canaanites, shoot, them niggas round there playing in booty holes and, 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 and hitting jackals and, and, and all manner of this year and unclean sex and telling lies and worshiping other gods and sacrificing children. Shoot, them niggas probably were convicted in their own conscience and probably just didn't care. Something, something crosses your brain to say, when I take this small infant child and throw it in a fire into a statue of an owl that I made, that son about this can't be right. And man chose out many inventions. Niggas choose to do what they want to do. At the end of the day, people choose to do what they want to do. They choose to go where they want to go and they choose to hang with who they want to hang with. Same way people choose to marry who they want to marry. The only thing you don't choose is your children. You know what I'm talking about? And the family you were born to. That's about the only thing you don't choose. Outside of that, you choose everything else. You know what I'm saying? When I say don't choose your children, meaning you don't choose how their personality and mind frame is going to be. You can mold it as much as you want to mold it, but at the end of the day, they still going to choose to do whatever it is that they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And y'all, every one of y'all should know that. I know some of y'all done taught each other to use the pot. Them niggas still pee and poop on themselves. Hopefully most of them are not doing it now, but they had that time period where, you know, I know this person, I know this little nigga know how to get up and go sit on their toilet. Yeah, he sat right here and looked me in my face and wet himself and smiled at me while he did it as if it wasn't going to be no retribution or consequences or repercussions. You know what I'm saying? That little boy, that little girl knew to go over there and sit on that toilet or sit on that pot. But they felt like, for what? I don't want to sit on it. I'm going to wet myself and you're going to wash me. Is that what they do, though, don't they? They know you're going to wash them. Is you going to let them sit there and they poop? Is you going to let them sit there and they urine? You would. Just call that nigga and get DTF on that nigga and lock that nigga up. You old nasty nigga. But guess what, though? When you get 60, 70, 80 years old, they're going to sit there and let you look at your mama. Remember that time you left me in my pee? <laughs> it's time to leave you in your pee. Mama, your mama wipe me. I ain't wipe mm -mm. Remember you ain't wipe me? You ain't going to be able to do nothing. You 80 years old. That's a car going to throw you in the home. Screw that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you heard this nigga old country nigga why where you from Mississippi that nigga from Lakeland talking like that and they say his wife his wife gonna be the one like this here I don't like your mother she's always farting <laughs> and she always tells me to come in the room and I smell it <laughs> So like every time I make some food, she still she steals she steals the food off my plate. I ask her, did she eat this gravy on her lips? She says she didn't eat it. <laughs> Very well. Drop down right here to about verse uh, 26, though. Well, 25. Mar. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Yasharal until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Yasharal shall be saved, that it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away from ungodliness from Jacob. That's why Abraham come into that part of the covenant. 
because he made that covenant with the house of Abraham and bestowed it upon Isaac, who bestowed it upon Jacob, who progenated the 12 twives of Yasharal. You know what I'm saying? So he has to do this based off the promise which he made. <laughs> but this is my covenant unto them, which when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the Basar, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. So you see how this tie into this here? Abraham's mentioned in that Matthew because they were chosen, as y'all had already stated. They were chosen. So he has to have that. I got to start with Abraham. This is the chosen seed. He say, for the gift and calling of Elohim are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed Elohim, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief. So now this is why the one where it starts with Joseph and ends with Adam. Because of all those other people. Because guess what? If we, if we were to flip this page over and see Terah's name in Luke, was Terah serving of Yahuwah? He was not. So that would contain everybody in Ur of Chaldees at this point. So this is a showing that this is what dude be arguing and they don't be understanding the point. This is why Adam is mentioned because all the nations had to have a right to this salvation as well. Even so now also have even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may also obtain mercy. For Allah he have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Can we conclude? Can we conclude? That Adam was in a, in a state of unbelief? Will we be able to conclude that? And if so, why would we be able to conclude that? You don't think he was in unbelief? Yeah, he was in unbelief. He told him not to do something and he did it. He, say, he said, no, he said that Adam wasn't deceived and that Eve was in the transgression. He wasn't lied to, but he definitely didn't believe. He told you, if you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. He surely ate of it. So he didn't believe. He didn't believe. Which make it even worse. Because he wasn't the one who did it out of being, see, she was beguiled. See, transgression is a state of rebellion. See, she rebelled, and she told you why she was rebelling. But it ain't even that there. It'll make me wise. It looked good to my eyes. You know what I'm saying? She stated her rebellion. Adam sinned. Do you know what I'm saying? And not to God. Cause he knew. She sought it out. And she was in rebellion. That's what her transgression. Transgression, by definition, is rebellion. You know what I'm saying? Adam sinned. That's why it says nobody sinned after the similitude of Adam. Now, it does say in Job, if I try to cover my transgressions, it's Adam. Because then Adam's rebellion was even further. And after he sinned, he didn't cop to the sin. He tried to cover it up. So now he went from sin to rebellion. Because when he came to have to cop to it, what did he do? He ran it high. He ran ahead. I mean, he wasn't even going to tell him what he did. And then what's the first thing he did? He didn't say, I did eat. The woman you gave me, she gave it to me. And what did y'all tell her? Well, nigga, you know what I told you, though. Well, there ain't no blaming because she definitely did give it to him. He definitely could have turned it down. You know what I'm saying? No, that bitch is particularly mean he wouldn't have fulfilled the prophecy of dying for your wife and becoming sin for your wife, which means we all going to hell. No, he didn't put him in it. He didn't know that it was a part of the plan, but he could have, but he could have said, and also it was shown that he could have got another wife and just replaced his new wife, his old wife with a better one, which is, which is what you, who didn't do. We'd be totally cut off. We would be done. You know what I'm saying? But of course, is Adam thinking about that when he did it? He thinking about, I'm going to ride with my wife. My wife ate it. 
Shoot, it look good. Give me some, girl. I don't feel different. Ain't nothing happening. All I know, I see my penis. I see the, what's that in between your legs? I ain't never seen that before. What them things is on your chest? I ain't got them. I'm dead serious. They say they were naked and they went to cover themselves in the literal sense what we talking about. Because now they naked because they sin was exposed in the spiritual sin. But we talking about in the literal sin. She got an Audi. That was, and you got an Indy. You got one of those things. I call them breasts. Well, that's what we going to call them then. You ain't know none of that. Why would you need to know? Why would you even be aware that you wouldn't even? Which meaning that niggas wouldn't be lusting. Niggas wouldn't be lusting. You know what I'm saying? Because you wouldn't know what a titty was. You wouldn't know what a booty was. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't care. You wouldn't care. But they sought out their own inventions. He made them up right. They chose to do what they wanted to do. And then, see, that's where you sit back and mention it, right? No matter how attractive somebody may be, boy, if you can't look past that and see what type of heart and soul they got, you're an immature individual. I don't care how good they look, but do she feel y'all, though? Does she have a brain? Can she raise some children? All niggas want to worry about it. What sex position she can hit and what meal she can cook. And when she do what I tell her to do. You need a little bit more than that. Will she tell you you're messing up when you need to be told that? And will you listen? Do you know what I'm saying? You need a little bit more than that. Same token, a lot of women, he handsome, but he dumb, though. He got a nice bill, but he's stupid, though. Nigga couldn't lead you out of nowhere. Nigga can't think his way out of a paper bag. Some of y'all know women who love stupid niggas. But you know, you like it, I love it. I ain't got to live with them. You know what I'm talking about? I done seen too many niggas like, girl, why you mess with that nigga? That nigga dumb. I'm talking about this your home, girl, not nigga because, you know, some nigga be hate. I tell you your nigga dumb and your nigga this here because he really want to slide in on you. But if that's your people, some of y'all done been related to somebody in your family. You told them, why you mess with that nigga? That nigga, that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? You ain't hungry. You ain't hungry. Where we at, man? I think we go. Let me finish this 33. Oh, the depths and the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Elohim. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who have known the mind of Yahuwah have been his counselor and who have first given to him and shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be esteemed forever. I mean, do you see how that work in? Everybody through Adam. Everybody got their breath through Adam. And that's the part nigga overlooking. That Asian man over there in Japan and China and Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia, they all got their breath from Elohim. All these white people, they all got their breath from Elohim. Everybody do. And what does that take us back to? You got to go to Adam for that. You got to. But stay out that plug, boy. Your hair going to stand on the top of your head. What was that? Come on back to... Uh, To Leviticus 25. So we look at it, we look at the power of the sacrifice will pair you to the sun. Again, when we look at that, it's dwelling place of what he's purchasing. All we want to be do, all we should really want more than anything in life is to be one with our God. That's what you should want more than anything. I seen a brother talking about this the other day, right? Because he's asking this asinine question. I don't even know why people have to ask this question. Who come first? Niggas say, your mama, your wife, or your kids. No, but I'm talking about, but I, a brother responded and his responded dude talking about, well, you know, dude was like, oh, my mama always come first, that there and the third, but he was like, you know, the book say one flesh. But we be more concerned about becoming one flesh with another person versus becoming one spirit with Elohim. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with wanting to be one flesh. Ain't nothing wrong with it at all. But our number, it seems for most of our people that that's their number one priority. When your number one priority should be to join yourself to your God first. Get that accomplished and get that taken care of. Hey. Hey. Let's sit down. Yeah, go sit down. He want us to know he liked that flag. At least the pole on which it stands. <laughs> 25 and what? 29. 
So he said, if a man selling a house in a walled city that he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold, within a full year, he may redeem it. He said, if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. Did we already do walls? I think we already did. Yeah. What y'all think he mean to that wall city? What do we use for our wall? We use what? Yeah, the protection of being joined together to the power of life. So it says that that wall has to stay into the hand of the person who bought it for a whole year. What y'all think that would mean? We could swing the Lamentations chapter two while you're thinking about it. What y'all think that could mean? It got to stay with the person who bought it for a whole year. Mm -hmm. Lamentations of Jeremiah chapter two. I think we shall begin in our. Uh... Well, I actually do have the paper. I can use this thing, but it's okay. Lamentations 2 and 3, I surmise. A couple of these verses I'm going to just be reading for the sake of reading. He said, he have cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Yasharal. He have drawn back his right hand drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoured round about. He had been his boat like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. Yahuwah was an enemy and he had swallowed up Yasharal. He had swallowed up her pal all her palaces. He had destroyed his strongholds and have increased in the daughter of Yehuda mourning and lamentation. And he had violently taken away his tabernacle as it were of a garden. He had destroyed his places of assembly. You who have caused the solemn seats and Shabbat to be forgotten in Zion and have despised in the indignation of his anger, the Malik and the Cohen or the king and the priest. What does he mean when he say he's violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden? What does he mean by that? He has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it was a garden. The word actually means garden. Garden of Eden, enclosed place, and it's figurative of a bride. The word is gone. G-A-N. So you can know. So clearly we will have Gamal and Noon, but we'll deal with that in a moment. What do you think he means when he say he has taken away his tabernacle as a garden, violently took it away at that? Mm-hmm. Lamentations 26. That word for violently to take it away is to do wrong, to wrong, to do violence, to treat violently, to do wrong. The word is kamas. It's three characters. Which three characters would you use? Kai and mean clearly. What would be the last one? You smell it. C-H-A-M-A-C. Yep, three characters. Okay, Samar, right indeed. So if we look at cot. What are we gonna use? If we talk about doing violence, clearly we're gonna have to use a little separation now. When we sit back and we look at me, what will we use for that? We can't say he's separating us from no chaos, right? So we'd have to say he's separate from who? Huh? From life. So, so, so mark what we, we use. Kamas. To do, to do violence. To do wrong. To treat someone violently. So what would you use if you separating somebody from life to do what? To take hold and grab them. And what are you taking hold to grab them for so you can do violence to them? But now he said he's violently doing this to your tabernacles as if it were a garden. Yeah, 
I mean, that would be accurate because that's the only thing you're going to look at, especially that that's the word mean. The word mean. Now, when you look at tabernacle in here, the word is simply soak, which means booth. So what would you use for that? You ain't got but two. You ain't got but two options. Two characters. That's all you got. And what would be your other one? It's okay. So when you look at that, He's taking away the tabernacle. So what is he taking away? Again, again, not even the support in the hand. He done grab hold of the right hand. He done grabbed hold of his son. He done grab hold of his son. Because remember what did he say? Destroy this te temple and he'll do what? Raise it up in three days. Matter of fact, look at the place. What it is? Matthew, hold it. Let me tell you the title too. Matthew 22. Matthew 26. Twenty-six and fifty-seven. And they had laid hold on Yahushua and led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council saw false witnesses against Yahushua to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of Elohim and build it in three days. So when you look at that, right, they said that he was saying that, right? But who violently took away his, his tabernacle like a garden? It was Yahuwah. But who allowed, who, who, who the ones who actually pulled that off? It was man. It was his own people. Let's go back and look at him taking away that garden by violence. Genesis chapter 3. I mean, that's go hard. Three. Three and 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did Yahuwah Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them. Yahuwah Elohim said, Behold, this man, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore Yahuwah Elohim sent him forth from the garden of Eden to the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turn, turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now I'm going to ask you a question. In the garden of Eden, right? Yahuwah took it away, but would we say what, what, what he did right here? Would you say he took it away as violence? Would you say that's violence right there, what we just read? I would say violence. No, it said also means to do wrong. He said he will take away his tabernacle as it were a garden. The word kamas means to do wrong or to do violently. So we did already talked about how it's separating you from the life of Elohim, or the life that's going to grab hold unto you. So who did the violence that caused that tabernacle or their bodies? Satan did. He the one did the wrong. John 8 and 44. He the one who did the wrong. Now, and I'm mentioning this here for a reason. Because see, I don't want you to get your, your tabernacle violently taken away as if it were a garden. John 8 and 44. Make it 42. Yahusha said unto them, if Elohim were your Abba, you would love me. For I proceed forth and came for Elohim. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, 
because there is no truth in him. And when he speak a lie, he speak of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So, you know, if he's a murderer from the beginning, then what did he do? He's the one who violently took away that tabernacle as if it were a garden because he caused the garden of Eden to be taken from them. And he caused it by the wrong that he did. And what was the wrong that he did? It was the lie that he told. So when we look, when Peter tells you what? To be aware of your adversary, the devil, because he walk about as a roaring lion looking to devour, then you're supposed to have enough wisdom to know not to let that happen to you so your tabernacle is not taken away from you as that garden was. See, look at something in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. After 1 Corinthians 14, what are we I want Revelation chapter 2. And see, this take us back to that uh, adopt or that overplus. You're supposed to know how to move. You know how to move. Your tabernacle is not getting taken away. And he said he had indignation for the king and the priest. And we have to deal with that too. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. What is it that I want? 14 and then... Uh, and, and 19 or 14 and 20. That's all I want. He say, brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Remember how we talk about the principal thing is wisdom. But when, in getting wisdom, what you need to get. Getting understanding according to Job is what? Departing from evil. He said that, you know what I'm saying? Departing. Come on, get that Job 28 and 28 so y'all know what I'm talking about. Under man, he said, behold, the fear of Yahuwah, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So he told you, and malice be children, but in men be understanding. So in the, as a man, you're supposed to know to depart from evil. As a man, you're supposed to have insight into the plan of Yahuwah. How can you say you're a man and you don't depart from evil? How is that possible? You definitely couldn't say you was a man of Elohim and you don't depart from evil. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not even going to be able to happen. And that shows if you don't depart from evil, you don't have understanding. What did Paul say you're supposed to abstain from the appearance of what? All evil. You don't even want to do something that, uh, that can appear to be evil. And you know what I come in at? When you're seeking to do your will and not his will. Because when you're doing your will, you don't care for it. Well, I ain't doing no wrong. But it appear to be evil, you dumb nigga. It's still going to call these people to run their mouth. Well, why am I judge of another man's conscience? Because he, Paul, dealt with that type of stuff. What do you mean? If you serve Yahuwah, then you're going to make sure that no man's conscience could ever condemn Yahuwah in itself based off what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? He said in understanding you're supposed to be a man. So if we was to take that and apply that to a lot of people, then they would be little boys then. Because he said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away, which means I no longer deal in a lack of understanding. I deal in understanding. Romans chapter, I mean, Revelation chapter 2. Two and six. Make that two and two and four. I just do two and one. It ain't going to hurt nobody. It's five o'clock. You got to get rid of the slide. Unto the Malachim of the synagogue of Ephesians, right. These things say of he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, who walk in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy work and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And has tried them which say they are apostles and are not and then found them liars. And has borne and has patience for my name's sake and has labored and has not fainted. You see how we sit back, he said, had labored. Remember how we talked about last night about he said, call my laborers. Labor don't necessarily got nothing to do with preaching no word. It's doing the work of Elohim. Remember what he sat back and said in Hebrew chapter 4? I'm going to pull it real quick. When he tell you in Hebrew chapter 4 that uh, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after that same example of unbelief because you have work you need to do. 
You know what I'm saying? And I can understand your point because the first time anybody hear labor in the word, we automatically think about preacher because that's what we've been drilled in our head to think. So that's natural that that's going to be a person's first response. You know what I'm saying? But your service to Elohim is your labor. That's your work. Remember what Yahusha told the scribes and Pharisees when he was a jit? Know ye not that I must be about my father's business. His work. My occupation. Your service to Yahuwah is your occupation. See, but niggas don't feel like their services have been any good unless they preaching or teaching or reading or this, that, that, and the third. When all service to Elohim is good, no matter how it's being done. Because if you serve in Elohim, what, what is the end result of that? Elohim is esteemed. His name is honored. Therefore, Yahusha is honored. Because his father and Shamahim is honored. Because the work of Elohim is being completed. And we don't view it in that fashion. Because we only viewing it from the framework of getting what we want and what we desire. He say, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hast hated the deeds of Nicolaitines, which I also hate. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Ruach saith unto the synagogues. To him that overcome, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. Now go to 1 John chapter 2. Because he said if you overcome, he'll allow you to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim, or which is in the garden. First John 2 and 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him from that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known Abba. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of Elohim abide in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Now, see, did Adam overcome the wicked one? He did not. So that caused his tabernacle to be violently taken away as if it were a garden. Remember why we read what Yahushua said? He was a murderer, that, that, that Satan was what? A murderer from the beginning. And that's why I mentioned what P Paul and what Peter tell you, what Paul tell you, not to be ignorant of Hashatan's devices or his plans, his plots and his purposes. Peter told you to be aware because he seeks to go about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So if you are not on guard and the word of Elohim don't abide in you, then he can violently take away your tabernacle or take away life from you as that garden was taken away from Adam. And now he don't have access to the tree of life. That's why I read that revelation too. If you overcome, now you can have access to this because he has not violently taken away your tabernacle. Because how does Satan do wrong? He does wrong by deceiving. See, Satan just ain't finna come up to you and say, come on, nigga, let's come sin together. That's not what he do. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not what he do. He come with deception. He come with making a lie look like the truth. He come by dressing up sin and making it look good and telling you, you will not surely die. What some of y'all people done told you? God will forgive you if you miss one Sabbath. But so what? Guess, guess what, though? Niggas done been in a situation where you know fornication was wrong and a nigga shot you son and be like, well, he'll forgive us. We can repent afterwards. Do you know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. That's a nigga telling you, you will not surely die. Do you know what I'm saying? A nigga tell you anything to get you, we could go to hell for this. He gonna forgive us. He's a merciful God. Right then and there, you having a conversation about God before getting butt naked. You know you need to put your clothes back on. If you having this conversation, this ain't something you're supposed to be doing. Because married people don't have that type of conversation. We going to hell if we do this. They don't have that conversation. So if you dealing with a nigga and you got to have a conversation about if you going to go to hell for it, 
You already know. Nigga trying to deceive you and violently take away your tabernacle. Straight up and down. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. How two godly people have a conversation about is what we finna do, go, we gonna go to hell and try to convince ourselves that we not going. That's the adversary in the midst. Because what did, what did Yahushua tell Peter? When Peter said, no, this will not happen to you. Get behind me, Satan. Because you savor the things that be a man and not the things that be a Elohim. You know what I'm saying? And see, we don't think about none of that type of stuff. If a nigga coming to you with an idea of sin and you know it's wrong and they trying to dress it up, that's the devil. That's the devil. That ain't God. Why would y'all come to you and try to dress up sin to make it look good to you? And tell you he ain't going to do to you what he said he was going to do to you if you did it. And we too stupid to see that Satan because we be wanting to do it. So we'll go along with it. Yeah, he ain't gonna kill us. He is gonna forgive us. We not wrong. The people who be talking about that word, they don't be knowing what they talking about. He's a loving God. He's merciful. Where's your long suffering at? Man, don't come at people with that nonsense. <laughs> no, the reason why the reason why I made that statement is because you strengthening people in their evil doing that a man will not return. If I can make you feel comfortable by what you're doing, then you won't return. Now, I done took away, not only is your body being taken away, but now I've taken away the kingdom of Shamahim from you. Matthew chapter 23. I got one part of it. We have to wait. I ain't going to get it all today. Huh? Yeah, I got too much. I ain't going to get that. It's 511. 23. 23 and 13. That's why I be telling you, boy. Everybody don't really love you, whore. And everybody don't want everybody to be saved. That righteousness is despised and wickedness is elevated. You know what I'm saying? And niggas will choose. A nigga will choose a project. Let me make him righteous. Let me make her righteous. Versus waiting for somebody who already is. You know what I'm saying? Like if you knew in the word, I, I can see that there though. You know what I'm saying? I got too much long. I ain't got no time to build a virtuous woman. I ain't got that type of time. That's a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're talking to somebody from zero to laying the foundation and then building the skyscraper. You know how long it takes to build a skyscraper? Years. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I use a skyscraper or a tower because the book tell you that a wife supposed to be a pillar of rest. Or a temple or a tower, somewhere you can rest at. It's the same token, even though that, that wicked woman made a song about it. You, a woman can't, you can't take no man and build him up and make him make him a righteous dude. You can't make him righteous. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen people get in the word and a woman thinks she can love a nigga righteous. You can't love that nigga righteous, he don't love you. You can't put that in a nigga heart. Do you know what I'm saying? We get fall in love with the illusion of what we want, and then we allow that damnation to consume us, and then we sitting there and we're gonna be looking up in hell like, dang. Cause we lied to ourselves. Ain't no way to go. Salvation first. Everything else that follows after it is a bonus. It's a bonus. Anything that come after salvation is a bonus. You know what I'm saying? Long as you got Elohim, what else do you need after that? Besides food, clothing, and shelter. Because you need clothes on your body. Cause I don't think nobody want to look at you walking around naked everywhere. Maybe a few people, but not a lot. Do you know what I'm saying? You know you need food. Cause if you don't have food, what's gonna happen? You're gonna die. And I don't think nobody want to sleep outside. You, you know what? You still going to be emaciated and you still going to die. Because all your muscles going to atrophy and go away and you just going to look like a stick figure. You watch Lost, nigga. You know what they look like. Lost. A show that I never watched. <laughs> it's an old show. It was probably before your time. Probably before your time. 23 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of Shamahim against men, for neither neither for ye neither go in yourselves, neither ye suffer them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him two four more the child of hell than yourselves. Now see, that's the strongest statement of them all. You know what a proselyte is? A proselyte. No, you know what a proselyte is? You know what a proselyte is, dude? You know what a proselyte is, Will? What is it? It's, it's, a, it's a convert. The convert. So, is it, it's nothing wrong with going out seeking converts. But do you notice, put Christian people to this, do you notice more brews be more concerned about bringing people in than actually converting them? And that these people end up being twice as wicked as the person who sought to convert them? I have a question. Go ahead. When it's talking about that, probably like, you're talking about somebody being a proselyte for the gospel or somebody being a proselyte. Well, he was saying turning somebody from their sins, period. You know what I'm saying? Turning them to serve Elohim, whether they was a Yahudim or not. Because it tells you in Acts chapter 2 that proselytes were present or converts. You know what I'm saying? But basically converting people to follow the law. And then you can go so, and you notice more brews be out here, and that's how brews, we got numbers, try to get more people and more people and more people and more people, but they just as, not just as, but they're twice as wicked than the person who converted them. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's all niggas have always, that's all niggas ever been concerned with, how many people they can get. Make them feel good about themselves. I got a lot of people. But the key thing is that these people are violently trying to take away your tabernacle. And they vi as if it was the Garden of Eden. Meaning, I'm trying to take away life from you. See, we don't sit back and think about that. That some people are coming to do. The book says if you cause the righteous to stumble in, a, un, in the wrong way, that you yourself will fall in the ditch. I, don't th I think everybody in here didn't have somebody at some point in time, regardless if they said they served you or, or not, who came to try to do you wrong to take life away from you. And I ain't talking about somebody doing you wrong as far as it's like trying to do something to your person, but to deceive you into doing something that is unacceptable to your God so that he could take away life from you. And you got to be aware of that. You got to be on point for that. Because niggas is out here. These niggas is vultures. These niggas is vampires. Blood suckers, if you will. Lamentation chapter 2. We're going to stop. We're going to finish out in verse 6. I ain't going to keep going after that. He said, he had violently taken away his tabernacles as it were a garden. He destroyed the places of his assembly. You who have caused the solemn feast and despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. What does he mean when he say he's despised in his anger, the king and the priest? He said he despised in his anger, the king of the priests. He calls the solemn feast and the Shabbat to be forgotten, have despised in it. The word for indignation is anger, is zom. You have three characters for that. It's spelled Z-A apostrophe A-M. What, what characters would you use? Zayin would be one. Which one you got to make? You got to choose one. Yeah. What's the, what's the Z A apostrophe A M. How many? Three. Three. So with that, what would we say? It's for anger, or the uh, or the uh, for indignation. You definitely gonna have to use cut off. Cut off, to cut off the power of life in his indignation. It also said when we look at the in the the, the solemn feast, it's moed. Y'all know the word for moed, don't? You? What that word means, Daniel? No, I say what the word means. Feast day. 
So he cut off the feast days. Now it's Mem and what else? Mem, ooh, and what else? You got four characters for this. It's M-O-W apostrophe E-D. So if you got Mem, the ooh, and what's the last two? No, E-D. The olive and the dollar. So Mem, what are we going to use? A power that joins you together. Now let's look at dollar and let's look at some of the other things we got for dollar instead of just saying door. Family for body. Say the move or the hang. And what? And dangle or hang, so to speak. That's what it means. So what will we use here? If you're going to look at Mima, you're going to use the power. And ooh, you want to be joined together. I mean, when I look at mighty and power, that's synonymous. It's pretty much the same thing. Because he said he caused it to stop. Caused it to be forgotten. Because remember, it's just appointed time, appointed place, set feast, appointed meeting, tent of meeting, also a solemnity, also could be for synagogue or congregation or season. It's used 150 times for congregation. And if you know congregation, congregation to tell you about what? The body. So what will we use when you when you look at that, right? You got the meme, you got the ooh, you got the olive and the dollar. Well, olive, what would you use? Because you don't want to be redundant and say power and might in the same token. What else? Talk. So in the aspect of this here, he said this is called us to be forgotten. So that yeah, you will use talk for this here because this is what's being forgotten. And what you being forgot how to do? To get into the door. So when you look at this here, the power of being joined together to the teaching to get into the door has been forgotten. Why has it been forgotten? Because he told you in Jeremiah, Yasharal had forgotten me days without number. And why is it forgotten? Because we continually seek out our own will. So in his indignation or his anger, he cut off the what? The power of life, right? He cut it off. And in his indignation and his anger, he had this against the king and the priest. It said he had despised in his indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. In Zechariah chapter 6, what does it tell us about that? See, I ain't even got enough time. The word for despise is not. It means to despise or to abhor or to, to cause to contemn or to be contemned. Also, it could mean to blaspheme or great occasion to blaspheme. And you got three characters for that, too. It's N-A apostrophe A-T-S. So clearly the first one going to be noon and the last one going to be sod. So what would you use in the middle? So you got the off again. So if you got noon, you got continuing life, right? But what would we use for sod, though? Because we know what we're going to get from the olive. We just talked about that. So what would we use for sod? Knots. It's the word for despise. You need to do more than some sit-up. Put them hot dogs down. Twinkies. Debbie Snipes. Cakes. Cookies. Mashed potatoes and french fries. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're going to be sitting there thinking them, they're going to get you. They ain't going to get you no abs. <laughs> Shouldn't have ate none at all. Should have got you some sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. That's what I said. I, I ain't said nothing about no pie. What are we going to use for that for that to saw? Stanley, what you got? Yeah, you Call them out, though. Um, you got chasing, hunting, people, 
So he said to chase away? So if he angry, don't you think that he done chased away continuing life for you? He done chased it away. In his anger, because he mad now. And what did, and what did, and guess what? We already read it in Romans 11. Why was it chased away? It was chased away because of our unbelief. And basically, we almost chased the, chased the son away because we killed him, ran him away. When we look at Olive, you chased away the, 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 the life of the head. Chased it right on away. Or Yahuwah chased it on away in his anger. But when you look at the anger in the priest, anybody know what Zechariah chapter 6 say about the priest and the king? I'm going to look at it in a natural sense first. Was y'all pleased with any of our kings? Because he said he was angry. Who was the king that was ruling during the time of Jeremiah? His name start with a Z. Zedekiah was ruling during the time of Jeremiah. What type of king was Zedekiah? He was wicked. What was wrong with the priest? We had already read about the priest in Malachi 2 earlier. Malachi 1 earlier. What was wrong with the priest? They were polluting the table. They weren't teaching the people. They were all out for selfish gain. So in his indignation... He had to take them away. He had to take them away. Now when we look at the indignation of the priest and the king, when did you, and, and if you priest and king at the same time, what are you? Melchizedek. So when can we look and see that when Yahusha actually solidified himself to be a priest after the order of Melchizedek before he died? When he gave away his mother. So now that indignation against the king and the priest can be executed when he is upon this state. Now the word for priest is what? Indeed. Kohan. Hi, and, and what words will we use? I mean, I already got I got to pull it back out of here. I'm running short on time. I'm not putting stuff up. Indeed. And what else? The hate and the noon. So for cough, what will we use? I don't think we want to use palm in the hand on this one. I would want to say we would probably want to use what? What you got for cough there, Stanley? Read it out to him. Open palm to allow to tame, subdue, be filled, work, in, And that's exactly what we're going to use, work. When we look at hey, what will we use? Not revealing. We're going to use breath again. And for noon, what, do you, what would you have, even though it's all about the same? Just for a priest. I mean, just read them. I mean, we're going to use like a seed. So like it's here, now you got the seed, right? And you have the work. Of the breath of life or the breath of the seed. And he cut that off. What was that work of that breath of that uh, life or the breath of that seed or the life of that seed? When you look at breath, it's the work that Yahushua had to do in his anger. Then we already dealt with Malik before. And what is a Malik supposed to do by definition of the character? Serve. Serve. So in his indignation of taking out the king and the priest, he took out the person who served so he could do the work of the work of the life of the seed or the breath of the seed or the breath of life. However you want to take it. We we'll take it back to when he was on the stake and he gave up the Ruach and he said, Abba, into thy hands I command my Ruach. Because in his indignation, this is what had to be done in order for, for Zion to be redeemed back. Which for us, that's what has to be done in us in order for us to be redeemed back. But nevertheless, we'll say hallelujah for Yahweh shot the world. We've got to stop the after that call right in my face. Thanks.